We were on our way back to London from Marrakesh, and on checking the budget airline destinations, decided to take a look at Girona, Catalonia, Spain. It was a pleasant surprise. It did afford all the niceties that mollycoddled travelers like myself crave. A nice hotel, a good breakfast, good coffee, and Wi-Fi. Great breakfast. It has character, beautiful streets, a river running through the centre of the town and plenty of great restaurants. In fact, the number one Michelin restaurant in the world is here. Furthermore, Girona is consistently voted by the citizens of Spain as the most preferred city in which to live. It has a number of historical sites that are fascinating. Though in a sense, the whole place is historical. The Jewish quarter, the churches, the buildings, the bridges. I notice one of them seems out of place, iron not stone more ugly than graceful and begin to understand how the people of Paris must have felt when its creator designed a tower for them. You guessed. The bridge might well have been called the Eiffel Bridge. Gustav Eiffel built it in 1876. And yes, he's the culprit who built the tower in Paris. It's no ordinary city, so take a long look and read between the lines and listen to the voices of the past, or you might miss out. So as you look, imagine. We need to go back over a thousand years, but first, what about the food? All right, we're in Girona, one of the main streets with all the shopping boutiques, nice alfresco restaurants. Ours is La Carda. We got some seafood paella coming on the way. Great location, good variety of starters, all beautifully presented. Paella, a must. Desserts. Delicious. The first known inhabitants in the region were Iberians. Later the Romans arrived and built a citadel, which was given the name Gerunda. Then the Visigoths and the Moors ruled here, and in 785 Charlemagne King of the Franks conquered it. Charlemagne means Charles the Great. He was the son of Pepin the Short. Napoleon's armies twice tried to conquer it and failed. Hence the monument in Independence Square Interesting, two units of Irish soldiers helped to repulse the French. It all happened here by the river.
Some of these buildings are actually from the 12th century, when there was a flourishing Jewish community here, and one of the most important Kabbalistic schools in Europe. They are the people who eagerly devour sacred Jewish texts. It was here that the rabbi of Gerona, Moses ben Nachman, or Nachmanides, was appointed great rabbi of Catalonia. Some say it's the birthplace of Kabbalah. Others say that was the other Moses. Most traces of Gerona's rich Jewish history were obliterated when the Jews were expelled from Spain. But in reality, it's difficult to make buildings disappear. Fascinating facts surround this part of the old town. It's called El Cai, the old Jewish quarter. In medieval times, as in many European cities, there emerged thriving Jewish communities. They lived here, had their synagogue, their homes, the butcher selling kosher meat, their schools, and even baths. The Jewish community here was second only to Barcelona in Catalonia. Girona has even been known as the mother of Israel, but in 1492, as in the rest of Spain, all the Jews had to leave the country if they didn't convert to Catholicism. Parts of the Kai are indeed very old. It's a maze of cobbled streets with the high buildings creating deep alleys. Don't miss a stroll through this historic area. An interesting item is the coat of arms of Girona, the motto being Girona Menomora. I fall in love with Girona. Believe it or not, the ancient cathedral, which stood on the site of the present one, was used by the Moors as a mosque. And after their final expulsion, was entirely rebuilt. The present building is Catalan Gothic architecture. The entrance is by 86 steps that form a formidable staircase. The small square at the foot of the steps is a great place to have a coffee and take in the sight. Inside is beautiful. Building started in 1038 and continued for six centuries. So there are different styles. The first building was built in the Romanesque style but redesigned in 1312. Okay, a little about Girona. It's a city of Catalonia in the northeast of Spain that now has a population of over a hundred thousand. 
The good news, and the bad news, depending on who you are, is that the budget airlines fly here. They speak Catalan, and also Castilian Spanish, and are good at football. It has a temperate subtropical climate. In winter it's okay, but can get quite cold. In summer, it's hot. Rain? Don't worry. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane, as the pilot will tell you if it's raining when you land. We hired a car and decided to get the overview from the top of the hill. Beautiful view and great weather. And we could probably see the hills of southern France and certainly could see the now rebuilt Roman wall. By the way, the bells you hear were signaling the proclamation of King Felipe VI of Spain in Madrid. Then back down to the city. What a day. Beautiful sunshine, 29 degrees, 1254, 19th of June, 2014. Felipe VI used to be the Prince of Girona. Didn't seem like they were celebrating much. We decided to take a walk through the city. Not so much a walking tour as a quiet stroll, taking in the beauty of this place and soaking in the history. Pass through the Placa Santa Susana and the Catholic Church that gives its name to it, then through the narrow streets toward the river. Some interesting shopping areas and old buildings on the way. Girona is well known for the picturesque houses overlooking the River Onya. They were built from the Middle Ages onwards and so exhibit differing styles. The bridges are the best viewing points from where we can admire the scene, which has been a source of inspiration for many artists down the years. The houses tend to give a feel of the Mediterranean, with facades painted in pastel shades, according to a palette created by a group of architects. Amazing. The colors certainly look great. We were soon in the old town, La Rambla, parallel to the river, and the home of many street cafes and restaurants. It's a tree-lined avenue with al fresco dining, upmarket shops, and interesting arcades. It's on the east bank of the river. The narrow streets are now a pedestrian precinct, surrounded by the old city walls. And here's my selfie. As I walked into Placa de la Independencia, that is, Independence Square, for the first time, I remember thinking it was totally different. A little more modern, but has a great charm. The arches, the lamps, the actual buildings are majestic and the dining and atmosphere really attractive. It's mainly al fresco dining is not unlike Venice or Paris. But it's not like them either, if that makes sense. Not as busy as Barcelona, but grander than La Rambla. 
perhaps the heart of Girona, and a beautiful place to spend an hour or two, with many restaurants and cafes. Any travel destination with so many great restaurants has to be a high up on the list of places to visit. Girona is a top destination in this respect, but has so much more to offer. Girona has another great advantage. It's about an hour from Barcelona to the south and the Costa Brava to the east. Two great day trips. So we hired a car and set out east to the coast. Well, we've hired a car and uh, we're on our way to St. Felil in the Costa Brava and uh, it's very enjoyable, got a nice car and uh, it's about 40, 44 kilometers so we're just enjoying life here. This is the northwestern coast of the Mediterranean a very picturesque coastline with a Mediterranean feel to it. A small car was just right, as we didn't need to carry luggage. And the first stop, after a 45 minute drive, was for a snack and a coffee by the sea. Pleasant weather, a little cloudy, but warm. People watching, though there were not many humans around and no dogs at all at least not any white ones. Costa Brava means wild or rough coast and stretches from here all the way up to the French border. In the 1950s and 60s, it became a cheap holiday destination from the UK and France. The very good climate, scenery and excellent beaches enticing holiday makers from England's green and rainy land. The result was a proliferation of hotels. But even so, it's a beautiful place to visit. After a leisurely drive up the coast, we arrived at the quaint town of Palamos and began our exploration. Palamas was founded in 1279 by Peter III of Aragon. It's the only commercial harbour in the province of Girona and still has a thriving fishing fleet, well known for its prawns. A favourite with artists, it certainly offers beautiful views over the bay. As we walked into the town, it was easy to imagine what this place was like a couple of a hundred years ago. The narrow paved streets and traditional Spanish squares evident. It was not until the 60s that it experienced a rapid growth of tourism. But it still retains an old world charm. Walking to the northern end of the town, we encountered El Claustra, the remains of a convent dedicated to Our Lady of Grace from the 16th century, restored and now overlooking the marina. Palemos is built on a peninsula that protrudes south into the Mediterranean. Some streets have a sea view on each end. And as with many towns, the Catholic Church is prominent. 
the Church of Santa Maria always seems to be visible. The narrow streets with quaint balconies really make this town a charming place through which to take a stroll. Plenty of things to see. But the main streets offer many things to buy. Shopping is also fun here. And in addition to the usual tourist shops, there are some great places to buy clothes. The way around the narrow streets here appears to be by a one-way system for cars and a pedestrian precinct for people. It works well. We'd been on the road in Marrakesh and Girona for a week already, so it was inevitable that we should be blessed by a rain shower. Still, it gave us the opportunity to have an ice cream treat. Check out the fashion shops and have an early dinner in a very nice restaurant. And watch the World Cup and then, feeling very happy and satisfied, stroll back to the car as evening descended. have just had a, a very nice meal. We shared some prawns to start. I had lamb, Nate had uh, chicken and uh, very nice restaurant, very nice waiters. Very enjoyable day today and quite cool tonight but thoroughly enjoying the occasion. Then a drive back to Girona as the sun set through the scattered showers. I have to say that though it had been a long day, it had been a memorable experience. The kind that made me feel that I wish I could have had more time there to explore and see other places. A great day. Next day, and this time a day in Barcelona, 70 miles south of Girona, about 75 minutes by car, and we arrive in the capital of Catalonia, and Spain's second largest city, population of around 4.5 million, being the sixth most populous urban area in Europe and home to the second best football team in the world and the renowned Basilica Sagrada Familia that is the Church of the Holy Family What do I do if I only have a day in Barcelona? The number one place to visit is this Gothic Art Nouveau Church building started in 1882 and the cranes towering above it give a clue to the fact that it's not yet completed. It's indeed a spectacular sight, as though a traditional Gothic basilica had been engulfed by a creature from Harry Potter. It certainly draws the crowds is the number one location in Spain for a selfie. But our plan to actually go inside gave way to reason when we saw the queue extended halfway back to Girona. I'm sure it'll be very nice when it's finished. The latest estimate is 2026. It's certainly a sight to behold and well worth a visit, 
especially if you pray hard beforehand for beautiful weather. Perhaps take the open top bus tour, but in spite of the crowds, try to get some quiet moments. The next to Barcelona tree was the paella overlooking the basilica. We found the ideal place, ordered the drinks, and basked in the sunshine. Italian starter, paella main course, place noisy but a great view. Just having a paella outside the cathedral in the middle of Barcelona, it's delicious. Then a coffee and a ride to the top of Tibidabo, where there's a funicular railway, one of three in Barcelona. Mount Tibidabo overlooks Barcelona at a height of 512 meters. That's 1,680 feet. So is it a mountain? According to the American classification, it has to be over a thousand feet. The British Ordnance Survey people say it has to be 2,000. I don't want to be accused of making a mountain out of a molehill. But at the same time, I don't want to be the Englishman who went up a mountain and came down a hill. So I'll be quiet and enjoy the view, lest I be accused of trying to steal Barcelona's mountain. The railway was built in 1901, and these are the original buildings. The ride to the top only takes a few minutes. And once there, the visitor has a choice of seeing the church, the amusement park, or the view. I liked the view. After the experience, we descended for another coffee. And another aspect of Sagrada Familia. Then as evening fell, we completed our day by driving through the city to the beach. I must say it felt great. Let me put this sunny on. You always look better with sunglasses on. Uh -oh. The contrast of the urban metropolis and the promenade on the Mediterranean coast a few minutes away gave the soul wings. Every city should have one. What can I say? These people are walking in my shadow. Oh, this is a shadow of my former selfie.
What a way to end the day.